Hi, I'm Stephanie Spence. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you today. It really is an honor. First, I'd like to thank all of my professors. And I'd also like to acknowledge and thank my life partner, Michael Ornowitz. When I came to LMU about three years ago, I came here with hopes and dreams that the education I would receive would allow me to take a bigger step to helping the world be a better place for me and generations to come. And I'm here today to talk with you about an idea that I believe can turn those hopes and dreams into a reality. But first, let me say what I'm not going to talk about here today. I'm not going to talk about destructive climate change, unchecked gun violence, rising domestic abuse, legislative policies that are out of step with mainstream humanity. Instead, I'll simply focus today on a positive way forward to help solve those global issues that I won't talk about here today. <laughs> Compass is a powerful tool for personal growth and transformation, but it must be approached with care and intention to be used effectively and ethically. Compass generates power. Compass in and itself can be used for good or bad. What I'm focusing on here today is Compass used with a positive intention because I have an idea. If I could just work the clicker, okay, turn it down. Oh, now I'm thinking I have an idea. And this idea is bold. It's not that complicated to understand nor is it controversial or culturally biased in any way. <laughs> However, I must be honest, this idea will make you a little uncomfortable. And maybe, just maybe, that would be a good thing for all of us. Because today's problems won't be solved unless each of us focus on changing our inner self to drive changes in our outward behaviors. One notable figure who emphasized the importance of inner transformation as a prerequisite for social change was Gandhi. Gandhi taught us that personal transformation is a necessary precursor to bringing about positive change in the world. But how do we do that? Changing your inner self is not a pill, a quick fix, mandated through legislature, war, or violence. Pick up any history book and it will tell you that these methods don't work. I think it's time that we look to the past to move forward in the present and beyond. My hypothesis centers on the idea that if humanity is to evolve into a higher state of self-awareness, making the world a place where peaceful coexistence is possible, we each need to embark on an inward journey. Along this journey, our inner world evolves and our outer world behavior may enable a more global, peaceful coexistence. My thesis investigates the convergence between yoga's practice of tapas and the storytelling framework for achieving optimal internal and external living with particular emphasis on the process of personal transformation. Once upon a time, in the ancient language of Sanskrit, the word tapas begins with the concept of ritual fire. This spiritual practice was associated with the heat generated by ritual activity and physical mortification of the body. This word can be traced back to the Rig Veda, the oldest sacred text of Hinduism. In the hymns of the Rig Veda, tapas was associated with the heat that blazed up from the sacrifice and from which order and truth were born. Tapas was also equated with the primeval aesthetic heat of the creator, which was generated by the ritual activity of the priests. In the Vedas, tapas was linked with the ritual fire sacrifice known as yashna. Over time, the fire of the external Vedic sacrifice transformed into the fire of conscious restraint. In later texts, such as the Brahmanas, Aryankas, and the Upanishads, Tapas became more developed and was linked with the idea of spiritual purification. In the post Vedic texts, like the epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, Puranas, and other Dharma Shastra texts, the word tapas refers to austerities or penances that one performs to gain blessings or boons or to please the deity. 
heroes in mythology, like Rama in the Ramayana, engaged in tapas to develop their characters and achieve spiritual purity. In the Quran, there's stories of gods and goddesses with teachings on ethics and spirituality, highlighting the importance of tapas. Tapas was also crucial in the Dharma Shastra, which emphasized its significance in purifying the mind, developing spiritual discipline, and attaining spiritual liberation. In yoga, tapas became one of the five niyamas that helped in creating a foundation of mental and spiritual discipline. It was essential for spiritual development. Tapas is a sacrifice requiring endurance of opposing desires and conditions, which removes impurities and establishes new power over the senses. Tapas can generate inner heat, as well as creating a foundation of mental and physical discipline, and its mastery relates to, re to reaching unconditioned states. Broadly speaking, in the Bhagavad Gita, tapas is described as an inner discipline, where spiritual heat generated through austerities, meditation, and devotion to God. In the Yoga Sutras, tapas is defined as a burning effort towards discipline, transformation, and purification. It involves using physical and mental effort to transform negative tendencies, habits, and to cultivate qualities such as self-discipline, self-awareness, and spiritual purity. This becomes more relevant to my thesis in the Yoga Sutra places, more emphasis on the practical application of tapas in everyday life as part of the overall practice of yoga. Although tapas is first described in the Yoga Sutra as Kriya Yoga, 2.32 delineates it as an observance. In Yoga Sutra 2.43 though, we learn its importance. From austerity arises the destruction of impurity and the perfection of the body and the senses. In the famous book, Autobiography of Yogi, Yogananda learns that the purpose of yoga is to make us uncomfortable. Purposely subjecting oneself to a challenge can lead to a more fulfilling life experience, as opposed to waiting for changes to happen passively. There is no condition of stasis in nature. Every living thing is either moving towards growth, change, and development, or it has begun, it has begun to decay and die. You're either growing or you're decaying. A great story will always have its roots in this elemental question of life and death. This is the universal common denominator found in the human experience. By intentionally challenging ourselves through tapas, along with the framework of storytelling, we can create fertile ground for transformation. Whether through the practice of rigorous physical postures or the focused concentration of meditation, the aim of tapas is to cultivate the inner fire of energy and use it to transform the self and the world around us. In the 15th century, a major shift occurred. Hatha yoga rose to fame. The physical postures and breathing techniques became a central practice. And with it came the modern practice of tapas. This practice encouraged yogis to push themselves to their limits by methods including maintaining challenging postures for extended periods of time. This required immense mental and physical discipline and taught practitioners to voluntarily subject themselves to discomfort, austerity, hardship, and to develop willpower and character. This paved the way for various practices like meditation, fasting, and self-reflection, which helped yogis develop greater self-awareness and self-control and, and to cultivate a deeper understanding of their inner nature. In the present day, tapas continues to be a vital aspect of yoga. Ashtanga and other modern yoga styles emphasize physical challenges to cultivate mental and physical discipline. But with time, more introspective practices like mindfulness meditation have also become popular to achieve inner peace. As the therapeutic benefits of yoga began to permeate the Western world, the story continued to unfold. It was a story of growth and discovery as people sought to deepen their yoga practice. At the same time, Buddhism was also gaining popularity and yoga became connected with the idea of suffering. The story of yoga and the practice of tapas continues to change and grow, and BKS Iyengar and many other influential voices 
remind us that asana practice is an opportunity to confront and overcome obstacles both on and off the mat. Iyengar believed that the journey of yoga was not an easy one and that showing up for your yoga class would require dedication and perseverance. Yet, it also became popular in the many growing styles of yoga to believe that the lessons learned on the mat could be applied to one's daily life, and this idea began to take hold. So when did we start calling the practice of yoga a journey? More than the physical postures, yoga is also a journey of self-discovery and inner transformation, as described in the Katha Upanishad. This ancient text refers to the great journey of the individual soul from the physical world to the ultimate reality or divine realm. But this journey isn't easy. It requires determination, discipline, and wisdom. That's where storytelling comes in. By sharing our stories and experiences, we can better understand ourselves and our shared humanity. To make the idea of a journey that requires determination catch on, you need a way to advertise it and create some excitement, create some buzz, and it needs to trend. No, I'm not talking about advertising topics on social media. Storytelling is the key. Our everyday lives are full of stories, making it a universal platform that each of us can relate to. But if we're going to talk about story as a platform to bring modern topics into mainstream adoption, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. Aristotle was a philosopher who lived more than 2,000 years ago, and his ideas about storytelling have continued to influence writers and storytellers throughout history. In his work, Poetics, he broke down the components of a well-crafted story, including plot, character, and language. Aristotle observed, drama imitates life. Christopher Vogler, inspired by Joseph Campbell's work, noticed that there were common elements in adventure stories and myths, a pattern or a template guiding the design of stories. Storytelling pervades the entire fabric of human societies and cultures. It's a universal human experience that connects us to our emotions, memories, and imagination. We tell stories to share our experiences, express our feelings, and make sense of the world around us. When we engage in storytelling, we tap into our creativity, empathy, and intuition. So why is this important to practice in Kalpas? Imagine what could happen if we combine the power of Kalpas and storytelling. Yoga and the practice of Kalpas can be instrumental in self-observation, a powerful key to our own life story. The power of yoga and tapas is self-awareness, leading to a deeper understanding of our own inner being. When one undertakes a tapas practice, at least these days, oftentimes what a person may be seeking is wholeness. By tapping into the natural structure of storytelling, we can uncover the conflicts and challenges that shape our personal character and push ourselves towards growth and wholeness. Through this combination, we can gain access to a powerful tool for personal growth and self-improvement. Famous in Hollywood as a storyteller and script doctor, Dara Marks tells us that this quest for wholeness, for connection to all the undiscovered parts of our true nature, is the model around which the theory of the transformational arc is formed. Marx says that we are either moving towards life or away from it. This is the heart of the human drama, to stand up and fight through the conflicts, confrontations, and disappointments that we all encounter. That is the heroic challenge, our heroine story. This desire to know ourselves, this quest for wholeness, lies at the heart of undertaking a modern tapas practice. And by applying tapas, we can stay committed to our goals and continue to push ourselves to new levels of growth. Also, utilizing yoga psychology, I propose that by understanding and practicing tapas and the storytelling framework together, we can access a powerful source of personal self-improvement. To understand how tapas and story intersect, I first need to give you a quick lesson in what a character arc is. Character arcs typically involve a character 
going through change or a transformation, often because of their experiences and challenges throughout the story. This change can be a shift in their beliefs, values, or behaviors, or a real realization of their flaws and weaknesses. As our hero, our character, develops and evolves, we become emotionally invested in their journey and feel a sense of connection to them. Witnessing character overcome barriers and grow as a person can be a deeply satisfying experience that leaves us feeling enriched and fulfilled. With that in mind, what's the arc of the possible if we conceive of ourselves as the protagonist, the heroine, in our own life story? As it relates to my thesis, the tool for creating the arc is the body. For example, in a short three-act synopsis, it might just look like a mythological hero's journey in which the protagonist, who is also the heroine, the toughest practitioner, leaves the realm of familiar, ventures into a challenging unknown, and emerges victorious. How would it feel to move past the limits, limitations constructed by our mind and enter a state of awareness where we could have concrete access to peak experiences that transform us from the inside out. This is the essence of the tapas and storytelling goal. John Truby, the author of The Anatomy of a Story, teaches us that your hero's development depends on what beliefs he starts with, how he challenges them, and how they have changed by the end of the story, which brings us back to our story. Joseph Campbell wrote in The Hero's Journey that the first function of mythology is showing everything as a metaphor to transcendence. The psychological function of mythology puts us in accord with the inevitable arc of aging that we all traverse and that we each must come to terms with, who we are, how we change with time, and how our roles in society and with our family also change. We look to the stories of our culture to give us the understanding we need to make sense of our changing roles. Campbell believed that the hero's journey reflects the human experience of transformation, growth, and self-discovery. He argued that the stages reflect the challenges and obstacles that we all face and navigate through life and the universal human desire to find meaning, purpose, and fulfillment. As many people, have also created a heroine's journey as well. From the Indic lens, Campbell acknowledged the rich foundations of Hindu mythology. Two Indian scholars whose framework is shown here write that the hero's journey is to develop viveka, discrimination, and move towards ultimate good. These authors write that the Indian philosophical system views a hero as a dira, one who experiences life fully while being anchored in a state of Diana, attention, Diana. But where the true magic lies is within the intersection of modern tapas and storytelling. In fact, the use of the heroine's journey as a starting point for the tapas participant story could be seen as an intersectional approach as it recognizes the ways in which gender intersects with other identities and social structures. My modern topless experience is a genderless transformational journey. My modern topless experience shown here is a transformation of, transformative journey of personal growth and development inspired by the principles of yoga and the transformational arc found in storytelling narratives. It's unique in that it involves a combination of postures, breathing, relaxation, everything you see here, to embark on the topic's journey, you first need to prepare yourself mentally and physically by setting intentions for personal growth and transformation, accepting the call to adventure. You'll also need to develop discipline and commitment and stick to your chosen challenge for, say, three months, huh, Lori? <laughs> As you move through the 12 steps, you'll face internal and external obstacles and op opposition, but you'll also experience moments of realization and insight that shift your perspective and change the course of your journey. I'm confident you'll grow and develop, shedding old patterns and habits, and ultimately integrate the lessons learned on your journey into your daily life. To make the most of a topless experience, it's important to practice regularly, study, and maintain discipline. You should also cultivate a sense of self-awareness, let go of attachments to outcomes, and trust your intuition. Hopefully, a future IRB study will allow us to confirm the benefits 
of my toughest experience framework. If humanity is to evolve into a higher state of self-awareness, we each need to embark on an inward journey. It's time for all of us to get a little uncomfortable. Thank you.